Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you William Powell and Hedy Lamar in Love Crazy. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. I know very little about astrology, but I'm sure anyone could draw an accurate horoscope promising success and popularity for the Lux Radio Theater tonight. One quick look at the stars would be enough, because those stars are two of the brightest in the Hollywood sky, William Powell and Hedy Lamar. We borrowed them from the Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer constellation, where they shone together recently in Crossroads and where Hedy Lamar has just finished the much-talked-about white cargo. We went to the same studio for our play, the gay comedy Love Crazy. You'll remember it as one of Bill Powell's most versatile performances. Tonight you'll hear Bill and Hedy Lamar as husband and wife, starting out to celebrate their wedding anniversary, but naturally not expecting a domineering aunt, an ex-sweetheart, and a lunacy commission to horn in on the celebration. In a world where people have adventures like that, I suppose very few are guided by the Greek philosophers. But you, you'll find some highly modern ideas among them. There's Aristotle, for instance, who had never heard of Lux Toilet Soap because it hadn't been invented, but stoutly maintained that personal beauty is a better introduction than any letter. He might have been thinking of a motion picture star or any one of millions of lovely American girls who know all about Lux Soap. They all share the, the same secret. And the little magician that helps them is known to most of you, I believe, in three little words. Lux Toilet Soap. Three other words, curtain going up, bring on the first act of Love Crazy. Starring Hedy Lamar as Susan and William Powell as Steve. Oh! 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 Hey! Joe! What's the matter up there? Hey. What's the matter? It's Mr. Hey. Island on the 10th floor. What happened? I don't know. Oh. He's got his head caught in the elevator door. <laughs> Mr. Steve Ireland, apartment 10A, has his head caught in the elevator door. This evening at 7 o'clock, Mr. Ireland was the happiest man on earth, all ready to go out and celebrate his fourth wedding anniversary. Now, just 10 minutes later, he has his head caught in the elevator door. Such is life. Let's go back a little and see how it all came about. It's seven o'clock, and Mr. Steve Ireland has just entered his apartment. Susan! Susan! Is that you, Steve? Oh, hello, darling. Happy anniversary, darling. Happy anniversary. Oh, what's that thing? That, my love, is a portable phonograph. Oh, darling, I've always wanted a portable. Yeah? Well, it was the best I could rent for 35 cents a day. Pretty cheap, considering it has my initials on it. Oh, uh -huh. darling... I've got some great news for you. What? I've decided to keep you another year. <laughs> Maybe you haven't seen the new models. They haven't got brakes like me. <laughs> what brakes have you got? <laughs> Will you do something constructive? What? Will you get my walking shoes? Your walking shoes? Yes. You don't expect me to walk four miles in dancing shoes, do you? Well, uh, look, darling. Do you think we want to go through that rigmarole again tonight? Rigmarole? Oh, darling, we swore that every year we'd do exactly what we did when we were married. Yes, I know. Uh, oh, I love that walk to the Justice of the Peace. Yeah, but it's four miles. Look, darling, I've got an idea. Why don't we do everything we did, only in reverse? In reverse? Yeah, uh, backwards. Oh, but that would mean that we'd have to take our four-mile walk at midnight. And backwards at that. Yeah, that's right. Everything backwards. Oh, but that sounds very silly. Well, now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Now, let me show you. Uh, going in reverse, it is now 1 a.m. Now, let's see. What was the first thing I did? Oh, I turned out the lights. There we are. Wait. You forgot to wind the clock. Oh, yes. Yes, I set the alarm for 12 o'clock. You were going to lunch with your Aunt Bessie. The next thing you did was to crack your ankle on that chair. Well, if you don't mind, I'll just skip that part of the routine. <laughs> well, then the next... Oh, darling. You know, you shouldn't be allowed to stand at the moonlight like that. It ought to be against the law, like other strong drugs. I don't remember you saying that before. I should have. Come here, darling. 
Ah, oh, Steve, the door. Oh, for the love Might of... Might have better answer it. All right. But whoever it is, they shall not pass. Happy anniversary, Steve. Four years ago today. Isn't it wonderful? Yes, isn't it? Steve, you look funny. Are you all right? Oh, yes, fine, fine. Come in, Aunt Betty. Oh, hello, Aunt Betty. Oh, there you are. Happy anniversary, darling. Thank you. Put on the light, Steve. No, I can't stay long, darling. I just wanted to congratulate you. After all, you've been just like a daughter to me, Susan, hasn't you, Steve? And you're just like a mother-in-law to me, Aunt Betsy. <laughs> <laughs> darling, Steve. <laughs> now, just wait till you see what I've brought you. A rug for the foyer. There. <gasps> Isn't it just too matchless? Oh, uh, it's, it's lovely, Aunt Betsy. Isn't it? Gorgeous. <laughs> Where did you ever find such a beautiful shade of uh, purple? Well, put it down, Steve. Don't you wonder how you ever managed without it? Oh, it's, it's lovely, Aunt Bessie, but uh, I thought you knew that we had to take up the rug you gave us last year because uh, the floor is just too highly polished. Everybody flipped on it. I remember very well, but the dimensions of this rug are absolutely perfect. Oh, Susan, dear, I wonder if I could have just a little bite to eat. I'm famished. Uh, but Aunt Now, Betty... don't fuss or anything. Don't pay any attention to me at all. You go right ahead as if I weren't here. Go ahead and what? Steve. <laughs> yeah, I, I must keep an eye on the time. Your Aunt Laura is coming in from California at, at 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock? Oh, well, you'd better run along if you're planning to meet her. Yes, you wouldn't want to be late. Uh -huh. It's all right, children. There's no hurry. Oh, I completely forgot something. Nothing you have to dash out attend to, I hope. Steve, you can go out and mail this letter for me. It's my insurance premium. It must be sent tonight. See, dear, I hate to trouble you. Oh, no trouble at all. <laughs> what else would I have to do? I'll be right back to you. Oh, <laughs> look at him. <laughs> oh, thanks for the rug, Aunt Betsy. <laughs> Steve, always counting. <laughs> right back. <laughs> Elevator, hey, going down. Hold it. Yes, sir. Oh, good evening, Mr. Island. Evening. Watch your step, please. Well, Steve Island. Isabel. Oh, uh, how are you, sir? I haven't seen you since you were married. That's right. Four years to a day. Oh, now, don't tell me you're not back in circulation yet. Oh, not me. I'm stuck for life, and oh, I like it. that doesn't sound like Stevie the party boy. Hey, weren't you married, too? Yeah, a month after you jilted me. But with me, it was different. You see, I had to do something to mend my broken heart. Oh, uh, your broken heart. You were glad to get rid of me. Anyway, that's what I told people. Oh, Steve, you're looking elegant. Really? I wasn't even trying. What are you doing here? Oh, I just moved in. You live here? Yeah, 10A. I'm 11C. Well, we're neighbors. <laughs> Remember that if you ever want to borrow a cup of sugar, sugar. <laughs> Say, is this a ground floor? Uh, well, no, Mrs. Grayson, it isn't. Uh, as a matter of fact, we're in between floors. The power's off. You mean we're stuck? Looks like it. Say, I can think of a lot better places to park. What are you going to do? Well, we'll have to go out through the top of the elevator. You mean that, that little hole up there? Yes, sir. That's the emergency door. Then I can stand on the top of the elevator and open the door on the fourth floor. Oh, I see. Give me a boost, will you, Mr. Island? Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, there. Okay. One second, Mr. Island. Hurry up. Okay. I'll just wait till I get the door open. Well, I guess you're next, Isabel. <laughs> How is your acrobatic work? Well, it hasn't changed much. Uh -huh. Now, uh... Right here, just, uh... Uh, just put your foot on my knee and then uh, uh, then on my shoulder. Oh, but uh, I'd better take my shoes off. I don't want to stab you to death. Oh, thanks. I guess I wouldn't look so well in footprints. Here, put them in your pocket. Huh? Oh, yes. Uh, ready? Ready. Ali oop. Oh. Uh, easy. Well, don't wiggle, Steve. Well, uh, would you mind uh, uh, not scuffing on my face, uh. please? <laughs> oh, okay, Mrs. Grayson. Up you go. Oh, uh, thank you. Now, if you'll hold the elevator door open just a minute, I'll help Mr. Island. Uh, give me a hand, Joe. Okay. Come on. Come on. Of course, this elevator would never get stuck with that special unit. Hold on to that door, Mrs. Grayson. Yeah, I've got it. Okay, Mr. Island. Your head's up, Steve. Now, just play like it's a transom you're climbing over. Yeah, but don't make jokes. Here, I'll help you. The door, the door, don't let go. Oh, Steve. His head's oh. gone. Open the door. I can't. Hey. Open it. I can't. Open it. If it's or something, I'll have to call the elevator. Oh. Susan. Uh, Susan. Steve, what's the matter? Steve Island, where have you been? Why, you're all dirty. Oh, darling, what happened? The thing. The elevator. 
face, it broke down. <laughs> Darling, was there an accident? Are, are you sure you're not hurt? No, 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 I'm fine now, but it's a close call. Oh, Angel. Your hat. Steve, you've lost your hat. Huh? Oh, I guess I must have left it the elevator. How do you like my new neck, dear? Must have stretched the foot. Oh, but what happened? I'm telling you, my head just caught the door. I was hanging there. I'll <laughs> get it. Excuse me, ma'am. Here's Mr. Island's hat. He left it in Mrs. Grayson's apartment. Oh, thank you. Mrs. Grayson? Who's that? Oh, yes, yes. I was, I was going to tell you about that, dear. Isabel Kimball, that is, Isabel Grayson, she is now. Well, she was in the elevator when it broke down, so I went into her place for a minute to uh, pull myself together, and I guess that's where I left my hat. Isabel Kimball, hmm? That's the girl who gave you a black eye when you told her you were going to marry me. Yes, but she's, uh, she's married now and got a husband. Really? Whose husband has she got? <laughs> Uh, just a minute. Sorry to bother you, sir, but Mrs. Grayson would like her shoes, please. Her shoes? Oh, uh, yeah, uh, here, I've got them in my pocket. Here you are. Thank you, sir. Well! <laughs> oh, that's all right, Aunt Bessie. Uh, that's how Steve dresses me, you know. He steals a pair of shoes here, a dress there. All I have to buy are my under things. Stephen, tell us your story of how you got Mrs. Grayson's shoes. She took them off to stand on my shoulders. Hmm? Sounds like fun. Well, it wasn't fun. Oh, good heavens. Look at the time. I'll have to run, Susan. I won't be able to stay for dinner after all. Oh, what a shame. Goodbye, Aunt Betty. Good night, Stephen. Good night, Susan. Happy anniversary, children. Thank you. Good night. Watch out for the rug. Oh, Aunt Betty. Oh. oh, Aunt Betty, are you all right? Are you all right, Aunt Betty? I fell. Oh, are you oh. hurt? It's my ankle. It's sprained again. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh. I I'll call a doctor. Oh, wait, Susan. Uh, don't you think it'd be better if she went to a hospital? No. No, I'd rather stay here. Help me onto the couch, Stephen. Oh, 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 what on earth are we going to do about Aunt Laura? Susan, you will have to meet her. Oh, but, but, but tonight, it's our anniversary. Oh, I'm sorry, darling, but I guess I'll have to go. Yeah, but look. You'll only have to drive her to Westvale, dear. Westvale? Well, that'll take half a night. Oh, I know, Steve, but... Hurry, Susan. Yes, Aunt Bessie. And don't worry about me, dear. No, Aunt Bessie. Uh, good night. Goodbye, Steve. Goodbye, Susan. Uh, happy anniversary, dear. Mm. Hello, Aunt Bessie. Hello, dear. Well, I finally got Aunt Laura bedded down. How's your ankle? Oh, my ankle isn't troubling me anymore. Oh, that's good. Stevie? I'll be very much surprised if you find him here, my dear. Really? Where is he? <laughs> I'm sure I couldn't say. Aunt Bessie, what are you trying to tell me? Well, I heard Stephen talking to that Grayson woman on the phone. Isabel Grayson? Yes. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. She called here and pretended she was a business friend, and he ordered a taxi cab, and they've been gone for three hours. Huh. Steve said they lived just above us, didn't they? Susan, what are you going to do? Aunt Bessie, I think you'd better run along now. Yes, of course, but... Oh, please, Aunt Bessie. Well, good night, dear. But if you take my advice... I'll handle this. Very well. Switch for. Hello? Uh, will you connect me with Mr. Grayson, please? Mr. Grayson? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Hello? Uh, this is Mrs. Ireland. Is Mr. Ireland there? Mr. Ireland? Certainly not. Well, uh, is Mrs. Grayson there? No. I'm sorry to bother you, but uh, when do you expect them back? Well, I don't expect them. Wait a minute. Do you mean my wife is Uncle Steve Ireland? Yes, she is. Listen, if he's starting to fool around with Isabel again, I'll break his back. Oh, no. No, I'm sure that won't be necessary. Oh, no? well, what do you think I should do about it? Well, uh, tell me, Mr. Grayson, are you good looking? Am I good? Hey, are you kidding me? What's on your mind? Well, if uh, Steve would walk in and find me, uh, say, kissing you... I'm pretty sure I wouldn't have any more trouble with him. And I don't think you'd have any more trouble with her, either. Oh, I get it. Give them a taste of their own medicine, huh? Great idea. All right, wait for me. Uh, what apartment is it? 11C. Oh, uh, I'll be there in a few minutes. 11G. Oh, wait, it's not 11G. It's 11C. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Mrs. Ireland. Who? Hello. Hello. Say, you are good looking. Huh? What? Oh, that makes everything perfect. Uh, may I come in? Well, I... Sure. 
sure. <laughs> Thanks. I, uh, I think we'd better turn out some of these lights. It'll make it look more romantic. Huh? Um, uh, pardon me, but I can't for the moment remember where we met. Oh, I don't think we ever did. I've seen you in the elevator now and then. Oh, so that was it, huh? I know what would help. Let's have something to drink. Oh, pardon me. Uh, what do you have? I don't suppose you care for whiskey. Why not? Perfect. But perfect. A little on the breast would help wonderfully. <laughs> oh, that's very funny. <laughs> Tell me, dear, how did you ever happen to think of this? <laughs> well, when I... When I thought about my husband being out with another woman, I decided to teach him a lesson. Oh, I see. Well, we'll teach him a good lesson, won't we? Eh? <laughs> we certainly will. I think I'll put some lipstick on you now. And why not? Kiss me, baby. Oh, wait. Uh, please stop. Well, what's the matter, baby? Oh, well, uh, there's no particular rush about it. Oh, all right. Have it your way. Tell me, what are those things? Those? Oh, just a bow and some arrows. I shoot a little. Really? Well, can you hit anything with it? Once in a while. I just happen to be the world's champion. I'll show you. See that target over there? Well, what? Oh, wait a minute. What are you doing? I'm taking off my shirt. I can't shoot unless my torso is free, if oh. you'll pardon the expression. Now what? See? Bullseye. Oh, that's very good. Bullseye. Wonderful, you. Wait. I think I hear them. Hmm? Grab me. Kiss me. Quick. Sure. Oh, you're beautiful. What have I done to deserve this? Mm. Wait. I don't hear anything now. I guess I was wrong. What are you listening for? Must have been somebody else. Who? Oh, I don't know where that was. <laughs> you know, you're not the easiest girl in the world to understand. Well, you're a little peculiar yourself. Oh, I'm not really. Not when you get to know me. Come here. No. No, stop it. Kiss Let's me, baby. Go. Now, keep away from me. Stop. Hey, now, now, now. Take it easy. Oh, help. Help. Hey, wait, baby. Wait a minute. Help. Oh, shut up, will you? Come back here. Let me alone. Now, cut it out. Cut it out. Please. Now, don't scream like that. You let go of me, Mr. Grayson. I'll scream like an eagle. Not out here in the hall. You might... Wait a minute. My name's not Grayson. You... You're not Mr. Grayson? No, no. That's Grayson's apartment down the hall. Oh, but... Then who... Oh. Oh. Then you thought that I... How dare you? Oh. Hey. Take it easy. Oh, uh, I'm terribly sorry. Uh, well, I, I guess I can't blame you very much. Uh, my name's Willoughby. What a stupid mistake. Well, there's no harm done, not unless your hair is turned white. <laughs> Good night, Stevie. Good night, Isabel. Well, look who is here. Hello, Stephen. Why, Susan. Well, aren't you on the wrong floor? Susan. <laughs> oh, it's world... your wife, Steve. How do you do? Oh, charm, Mrs. Grayson. Susan, what are you doing here? And who is that? Don't tell me it's Aunt Laura. Uh, my name's Willoughby. Ward Willoughby. He's Aunt Laura. She's a business acquaintance. Say, are you referring to me? Look, I, I don't want to be tiresome, but who is this guy? Uh, the name's Willoughby. Ward Willoughby. Mr. Willoughby, aren't you kind of cold without your shirt on? This gentleman is a friend of mine. This is my husband, Steve Ireland. I'm Ward Willoughby. How do you do? How do you do? What do I mean, how do you do? What are you doing with my wife dressed like that? I'm not dressed like that. Look... I was in my apartment, minding my own business. Oh, don't bother to explain. First, I want to know what my husband was doing out with the uh, Chamber of Commerce here. Well, I was just leading Mrs. Grayson out of her door. So, I noticed. What's the matter here? What's going on here? Oh, hello, darling. Who's this guy? Oh, he's, uh, my husband. Darling, this is Mr. You shut up. I'll attend to you later. Excuse me, Mrs. Island. I'll go and put a shirt on. Oh, are you Mrs. Island? Well, I've been waiting for you for the last 20 minutes. Another one? What were you doing, dear? Canvassing the building? Well, I'm not. <laughs> Will you keep quiet? Mrs. Ireland, you phoned me downstairs. Oh, because... she phoned you, I see. Mm -hmm. Yes, I phoned him. So I went to your apartment to tell you that you I... You weren't in your apartment when I called? No, I was at the desk. Well, I think I know who was in your apartment. Say, what do you mean? You're you know, know what she means, and so do I. I want to know what you were doing. Look, 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 I know what. Let's all roam together all through school. <laughs> Susan, are you asleep, dear? No. Oh, I thought you were asleep. <clears throat> uh, good night, dear. Steve. Yes? Yeah? Steve, am I what you call a, a jealous type? Jealous? You? Oh, you have an asthma jealousy. Not a bit. 
Then why do I want to chop your head off? Huh? Oh, I, I don't know. Maybe you think I'd look better without it. Maybe I'd like you to keep it from telling me what happened tonight. Oh, now, honey, it's not that bad. Look, you wouldn't mind hearing about it at all. Oh, don't tell me, Steve. Not if it's a lie. I couldn't forgive you that. Honey, Pot, all that happened was that Isabel phoned. Then I called a cab and slipped downstairs to meet her. We went out for a drink and then came home. You know the rest. You, you called a cab? Yes. And you took her off? Yes. You weren't in her apartment? No. All right. Don't say any more. I believe you, Steve. Well, of course. Now, that's my girl. Oh, Steve. I know that whatever else happened, you wouldn't lie to me. Well, not on our anniversary. Steve, there are only five minutes of our anniversary left. Don't you worry, honey face. We're going to have a million anniversaries. Uh, honey. Yes, darling? Just one little question. Uh, what was that guy doing in his undershirt? <laughs> He has to have his torso free when he shoots his bow and arrow. When he... <laughs> now, what kind of an answer is that? He's the world's champion bow and arrow. Yeah? Okay, you believe me, I'll believe you. <laughs> I'll take it. Hello? Hello, is Mr. Ireland there? Uh, this is Mrs. Ireland. Well, this is a taxi driver. Oh, uh, yes? Now, looky here, lady. Mr. Island ordered a cab at 8.30, and he ain't come out of the building. Does he still want me to wait? No. No, but I do. I'll be right down. Uh, what was it? The end of the world. What? What do you mean? Who was it? A taxi driver. A taxi driver? Huh. What is he doing, drumming up trains? So you went out, did you? You didn't go out. You went with her in her apartment. Oh, Susan. <laughs> Darling, now, please, please don't cry, dear. I'm not crying. <laughs> and, and me, if I am crying, it's because I think that 12 o'clock at night is a pretty rotten time to, to start my life over again. What are you doing? I'm going inside and get dressed. I'm leaving. Oh, now, honey, dear, wait. Oh, get out of my way. Now, now, listen. Now, let me get dressed. Susan. Will you please get your head out of that door? No. Whom are you going to believe, me or a taxi driver? A taxi driver. <laughs> Oh, in just a few minutes, Mr. DeMille and our stars, William Powell and Hedy Lamar, will return in Act Two of Love Crazy. And now, here's our Hollywood reporter, Libby Collins. Well, Libby, keeping up with the stars as usual? Well, this time, I was just ahead of one. The other afternoon, I was at Union Station in Los Angeles to meet a friend. Quite a little crowd of us were coming through the gate. I turned around all of a sudden and looked right into a pair of gorgeous blue eyes. And who should they belong to but Paulette Goddard? Libby, I've been in and out of that station dozens of times, but I never had luck like that. <laughs> she certainly did look stunning. Well, the ladies in our audience might like to know what Paulette was wearing, Libby. Did you notice? <laughs> Don't think I didn't. A simple dress with a short fur jacket. And a perfectly enchanting little hat. Um, dark brown with tiny copper sequins sewn all over the veil. You know, it must have been fun for Miss Goddard to wear that hat. I bet when she took a look in her mirror and saw how that sparkly veil set off a million-dollar complexion, well... Libby, she must have felt the way lots of pretty ladies do when they look in their mirrors and see a smooth, lovely complexion. Mighty pleased with themselves. And think how many of them, including Miss Goddard, must be pleased with their Lux Soap complexion care. You know, Paulette Goddard says she doesn't let a day go by without taking an active lather facial with Lux Toilet Soap. She just smooths the creamy, rich Lux Soap lather lightly in. Then she rinses with warm water and follows with a dash of cool. She pats her face dry with a soft towel. It's a simple care, but it really works. Yes, Libby. Famous screen stars, lovely women everywhere have proved that. Lux Toilet Soap, you see, has active lather that swiftly removes stale cosmetics, every trace of dust and dirt. It's such rich, abundant lather, too. Screen stars say it feels like smoothing beauty in to use gentle Lux Toilet Soap. Yet this luxurious soap costs but a few pennies a cake. Just try active lather facials with gentle white Lux Toilet Soap for 30 days. Then look in your mirror and see. We pause now for station identification. 
This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. Starring Hedy Lamar as Susan and William Powell as Steve. <laughs> Susan Ireland, the irate wife, has run the usual irate wife's gamut of emotions. From suspicion to certainty. From tears to angry determination. From her husband's bed and board to a divorce lawyer's office. That's where Steve finally catches up with her. Susan. What are you doing here? I'm arranging with George to get a divorce. But George is my lawyer. Look here, George. If you help Susan divorce me, you'll lose my business and my business's business. As a matter of fact, Steve, I was just about to tell Susan I think she's being a little hasty. Well, then what are you waiting for? Go ahead and tell her. Susan, I think you're being a little hasty. <laughs> Hastier than you think. I want you to file the papers and get going on things today. Today? Isn't that a little soon? Unless you happen to think it's four years too late. Well, I don't know quite what to say. Say? Well, there's everything in the world to say. Say that a, a divorce is something that you never stop regretting. Tell her that, that marriage is too important a thing to be broken up by a trifle. Susan, marriage is too important a thing Have to be broken up by... Have you any idea where I might find a lawyer with a mind of his own? Well, you might try Mulvaney, Mulvaney, and DeWest. DeWest is very clever. Thank you. Oh, now, Susan, please don't go. I've got to talk to you. I'm sorry, Steve, but I'll never again believe a word you say. Hello? Steve Ireland talking. Hello, Steve. This is George. What are you doing? What have I been doing for the last eight weeks? Worrying. Look, George, do you think she's really going to show up in court tomorrow morning? Well, she got back in town today. She's here now at the Bristol's party. At the Bristol's? Well, hurry up. I mean, hang up. I'll be right over. Steve, over here. What is she, George? What is she? Out on the terrace. Go ahead. Okay. Susan. Oh, hello, Steve. Susan, could I... Could I speak to you for a minute? I don't know. Isn't it unlucky for the groom to see the bride the night before the divorce? Susan, for two months I've been planning what I'd say to you. And now all I can think of is... I feel awful. Do you, Steve? I rather hoped you would. Tell me exactly how you feel. Well, I can't sleep. And when I try to eat, I can't. Because I've got a great big cold cannonball right here in the pit of my stomach. Good. What's good about it? Oh, Susan, why do you want me to be this miserable? Because I don't want to be the only one. Susan. Oh, it's only natural. I expected to feel badly for a while. Oh, but not that badly, honey. Kate, that's love. Yes, I suppose it is. Well, then let's go home. I can't. There's no such word, dear. There's no such thing as marriage based on deceit. Steve, I begged you not to lie to me. But I didn't lie to oh, you. Oh, Steve, if you'd only be honest and admit that you lied. There's nothing I wouldn't forgive you. All right, darling, if that's the way you feel about it, I'll confess. Uh, I lied. I was guilty. You mean you were in Isabel's apartment? Yes, that's right. An anniversary, you beast. But I've admitted it. You said you'd forgive me. I suppose it's perfectly all right because you've admitted it. But, honey cake, I only said I was guilty because you I said... don't care what I said. I'll hate you for that for the rest of my life. So, what's the trouble? Anything wrong, Susan? Oh, it's you again. The bow and hour. I didn't recognize you with your clothes on. Ward, take me home, please. How to sock him in the nose. Yeah? You and who else? Yeah. Hey, Steve. Anything happen? Yeah. He's gone home with Little Beaver. He's been in Arizona with Susan and her Aunt Bessie for two months. He's doing all right, I guess. George, you've got to have this divorce case postponed. No can do, Steve. But Susan still loves me. She told me. Call up her attorney and offer him a bribe, anything. Oh, no can do. Will you please stop saying that? You're driving me crazy. Well, look, Steve. Say, that would do it. Huh? Well, if you, if you went crazy, Susan couldn't divorce you for five years at least. She couldn't? Why, even if you suggested symptoms of insanity, why, it would require the postponement of 30 days before they could find out if you were crazy or not. George, I love you. Look, George, look. Huh? What's that? I'm a teapot. Oh. 
That's very funny, you know. Oh, that's only the start. <laughs> You'll have to have witnesses, Steve. Yeah, I got a hundred of them right here at this party. Here, hold my shoes for a minute. You might as well take the socks, too. What for? What for? Did you ever see a teapot with shoes and socks on? Oh, <laughs> that's right. Hey, somebody's coming out. Steve, quick. I'll meet you outside with the shoes. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Oh, good evening. <laughs> oh, it's nice and cool out here, isn't it? Very warm inside. My name is Kluger. <clears throat> said it's very warm inside. Where did you leave your parachute? I, I beg your pardon. <laughs> My name is Klugel. I, I... You'll pry no information out of me. My friend, I don't understand. Oh, you have lost your shoes, is that it? Lost my shoes? Oh, no. No, no, my feet were prisoners, locked up in those dungeons, without food or water. The enemy locked them up to keep them from talking. But they never said a word. They were loyal. I don't understand. So I set them free. See how happy they are? They wiggle. Woo, happy little feet, happy little feet. <sighs> the enemy. They're coming. What enemy? Don't you hear the horses? I know. No, and why? Because they're sneaking up on tiptoe. Horses? <laughs> Good night, my friend. My hat, please. Uh, yes, sir. Good night, Miss Darling. My hat. And you may give me the others, too. Oh, uh, excuse me, sir, but uh, them hats belong here. My friend, I set you free. Henceforward, you are a free man. But you can't free me, sir. I'm free now. Don't be silly. If I can't free you, then why am I Abraham Lincoln? What's the matter with Steve? The hat, please. Uh, Miss Island, don't throw them hats around. Sir. Hat? I set you free. Out the window, hat. Fly away. Hey, Steve, that's my hat. Why, he's throwing hats out the window. Goodbye, hat. Listen, that's my $30 topper. What the world is... Steve, this is your idea of a joke. They're prisoners. I've set them free. You're drunk. I never drink while emancipating. They're free, free, free. <laughs> Now, Mrs. Ireland, please state to the court in your own language your reasons for doubting that your husband is really ill or insane. Well, I just don't see anything unusual in the way he behaved last night. It doesn't prove he's having a nervous breakdown. He was just having a good time. You mean that such behavior is usual with him? Now, look here, George. You know he's behaved that way often. Really, Mrs. Ireland? Yes, Your Honor. I tell you he's not crazy. This is just a trick to delay my divorce. <laughs> Who did that? Uh, that was my client, Your Honor, Mr. Ireland. Mr. Ireland, do you realize you're in a court of law? Oh, I'm sorry, Your Honor. <laughs> Take your seat, please. Now, Mrs. Ireland, suppose you tell us exactly... <laughs> Mr. Ireland! Oh, I'm sorry, Judge. I was just trying to hail a cab. The court orders this case adjourned for 30 days. But why? You mustn't. I'm sorry, Mrs. Ireland, but I'm afraid your husband is in a doubtful mental condition. He'll be examined by the Lunacy Commission tomorrow. The Lunacy Commission? Thank you, Your Honor. Court's adjourned. Hey, George, George, come here. What's this Lunacy Commission? I don't like it. Lunacy, schmunacy, what's the difference? You've just convinced these people you're crazy. You can convince the commission you're sane. You've got nothing to fear from the Lunacy Commission. No? Then why am I afraid? <laughs> Now, Mr. Ireland, just sit over here, please. All of us are here to help you. Remember that. Thank you. Thank you. Well, now, gentlemen, what would you like to know? Uh, Mr. Ireland, if you'll please put those pegs in the appropriate hole. Oh, I see. Square peg in square hole, round peg in round hole. <laughs> well, a man would certainly be an idiot if he couldn't do this, wouldn't he? Oh, I suppose that's the point. Exactly, Mr. Ireland. Oh, good morning, gentlemen. I'm sorry if I'm late. Good morning, good morning Doctor. Good morning. Good morning. Well, good morning, my friend. Good morning, sir. <laughs> uh, haven't we met somewhere before? My name is Krugel. Oh, yes, yes, sure. It was last night at... Uh... Holy ice. No, 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 but, no. But, no. uh, uh, look, uh, uh, you... Mr. Ireland, you mustn't be upset at finding yourself here. We are your friends. Oh, I'm not upset at all. I, uh, I just hope, won't, I hope you won't be prejudiced about me. My boy, my boy, not at all. Oh, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> 
Shall we continue, gentlemen? Uh, oh, uh, uh, by the way, gentlemen, uh, Mr. Ireland is the man I told you about who uh, set the hats free and heard horses on tiptoe. Oh, oh so. I think, gentlemen, that we are agreed on the verdict. That will be all, thank you. Just a minute, Doctor. You can't declare this man insane. I'm his lawyer. I demand another hearing. Oh, now, please. So look please. here. I'll go to the mayor. I'll go to the governor, the president. Oh, quiet, please. Uh, uh, Mr. Rennie, if there's any change in Mr. Ireland's condition, you can have a new hearing in six months. Six months? Have Mrs. Ireland come in, please. Now, look here. You will be placed in the custody of Mrs. Ireland, and it will be up to her to take care of you. Mrs. I'll be placed in the cut. I'll be with my wife? Yes. Oh, that's fine, fine. <laughs> oh, come in, Mrs. Ireland. I, uh, I have some very tragic news for you. Your husband has just been declared insane. Declared insane? Oh, Steve, you fool. Susan, I tried to tell him that I'm all right, didn't I, Klugel? Oh, hmm? stop it. Stop that acting, you lunatic. Mrs. Ireland, I know this must be a terrible shock. Do you shock really to you. call yourself a doctor? How can you let him fool you like this? My dear young lady, no one has been fooled. Now, uh, uh, would you come this way, please? It's necessary that you sign a paper. Susan, wait. Don't let them take you, too. Oh, keep quiet. <laughs> ah, yes, 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 yes. Now, here's the paper, Mrs. Ireland. Uh, will you uh, sign here? What is this? Your consent to take your husband into your custody. Into my custody? Yes, that is the law, Mrs. Ireland. You see, your divorce is now postponed for at least five years. But, oh, I see. Doctor, tell me, is it the law that I have to keep him with me all the time? Yes, well, unless you wish to put him in a sanitarium or some such institution. Mm -hmm. And could you recommend some such institution? Well, uh, Dr. Verdering has a very nice place in the country. Thank you. Oh, Stephen. Yes, dear? Stephen, would you like to go to the country? Oh, I'd just love to go to the country. That'd be wonderful. All right, darling. (laughs) (laughs) After a brief intermission, Mr. DeMille presents William Powell and Hedy Lamar in Act Three of Love Crazy. Welcome, sweet springtime, da 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 Why, Sally, aren't you a bit ahead of time? This is October, you know. Yes, but I keep thinking of spring, because that's when my rainbow tulip garden will be in bloom. I hope everyone will take advantage of our wonderful Lux and Lux Toilet Soap offer. Sally, it's a grand offer for flower lovers everywhere. Think of it. Ten superb tulip bulbs, first quality, full size, for only 25 cents and the wrapper from a cake of Lux toilet soap or the opening tab from a box of Lux. Just send the coins, securely wrapped in paper, with the Lux wrapper or tab to Lux Rainbow Garden, Box 1, New York City. And be sure to include your name and address. If you prefer, you can get handy order blanks from your dealer. And you can send for as many sets of bulbs as you like, enclosing an additional 25 cents and wrapper or tab for each set you want. With your bulbs, you'll receive an illustrated leaflet of planting instructions. It tells you how to plant the tulips indoors in pots if you wish. That way, they'll bloom early in time for Easter, when it's so glorious to have spring flowers. Well, I'm no gardener, Sally, but even I can grow these. The instructions are so clear, and tulips are such an easy flower to grow. And they bring such a rich reward in beauty. Tulip colors are so brilliant. Darwin, cottage, and breeder tulips of the finest varieties are included in this rainbow offer. They're wonderful deep shades of purple and golden bronze, clear bright yellows and pale pink, and cerise and scarlet and rose. You'll be thrilled with the gorgeous display these tulips will make in your garden next spring. No ordinary bulbs, but from one of the largest and best-known growers in the country. And they'll bloom year after year. But don't delay. These choice bulbs are limited in quantity. I'll repeat the address. For each set of ten bulbs you wish, send 25 cents and the wrapper from a cake of Lux soap or the opening tab from a box of Lux flakes to Lux Rainbow Garden, Box 1, New York City. Don't forget to include your name and address. 
If you wish, get a handy order blank from your dealer. Please allow at least two weeks for your bulbs to reach you. And send now, because fall is the time for planting. This offer is good only in the United States. Now, our producer, Mr. DeMille. The curtain rises on the third act of Love Crazy, starring William Powell and Hedy Lamar. Steve is now in the country, in a lovely old house with a lovely old garden, surrounded by a high electric wire fence. This is Dr. Wuthering's rest home, but Steve is not resting very well. He's walking in the garden with an attendant. Well, nice place, ain't it, Mr. Ryland? Of course, the wire fence kind of spoils the view. Say, look, just a minute. Would you like to make $100? Just get me over that fence and out of this place. Mr. Ryland, I had a man in here a month ago who was going to give me a billion dollars just because I was so pretty. Do you know I never got a dime of it? Now, wait. Now, take it easy, Mr. Ryland, and I'll see you. Make yourself at home. I'll see you at lunch. Hey, Ireland. Hi, old kid. Remember me? <laughs> Say, what? <laughs> Look here, Willoughby. What are you doing in my car? I borrowed it from Susan. Oh, you did. Listen, you fake Hiawatha. One of these days, I'm going to spread you around like warm butter. How does it feel behind that fence, Ireland? <laughs> Very funny. Look, I got a message for you. Susan just wanted me to tell you that she's leaving for Arizona tomorrow, unless you arrange for a new hearing right away. How can I? I'm stuck in here. All right. Nothing to me if you want to be stubborn. Personally, I like Arizona. What? Yeah. So long. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me think this over. Well, I'll give you five minutes. Holler when you've made up your mind. I'll get in a few archery exercises. Why don't you take off your shirt? Thanks, I will. Good idea. I suppose you've got your little bow and arrow in the back of my car. Oh, I don't need the bow. You see, I just go through the motion. Like this. See? Yeah. You look like you ought to be on this side of the... What? Uh, just talking to myself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God! <laughs> What's the matter here, Mr. Island? <laughs> look out there. Hiawatha won't play with me. He ran away. The gardener left the gate open. Well, for the lover... Hey, Mike! Get that guy out there! He's shooting arrows! Without no arrows! <laughs> hey, you, come here! Hello? Come on, sonny, inside! Hey, 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 now, let go! Let go! Bring him in the gate, Mike! No, no, wait come a minute! Come on, easy! Hey, now. hey! Uh, okay, Mike! Now, wait! You fellas are making a terrible mistake. You know who I am! I know! You're Hiawatha! Y you frame me! This guy framed me! Come on! No, no, wait a minute! Grab him, Mike! No, cut it up! My name is Get Ward! Get the tree jacket, Mike! No! Come on. No, listen! Hey, Ward! What? Ward! Look! And then he told them I was Hiawatha, so they grabbed me and shoved me through the gate. How did you get away? I told you, I had to fight. Well, what happened to Steve? Did he get away too? Listen, I don't know what happened to him. I was just trying to get out of there. Oh, wait a minute. Hello? Mrs. Ireland? Yes. This is Dr. Wuthering. Mrs. Ireland, your husband has escaped. What? He and his accomplice. Accomplice? Oh, but that was only Mr. Mrs. Ireland, I can't talk now, but I might tell you we regard your husband as definitely homicidal. Homicide? He's a dangerous man. But don't worry, we're sending the police to protect you. Who is it? Open the door, quick. Hello, Isabel. Why, Steve. I'm Luke Isabel. Could you hide me someplace? Hide you? Yes. The, the cops are after me. The cops? But what They're all over the building. But I can't hide you here. My husband's in the shower. Isabel, where's the towel? Just a minute, dear. Steve, get out. I can't get out. They think I'm a maniac. Isabel! Yes, dear? Will you please get out? Look, look, give me some other clothes. At least do that for me. I can't give you my husband's clothes. He'd see me. Well, give me something. Give me some of your clothes. Oh, Steve, you can't pass as a woman. Get me a dress and a coat and a hat. At least I can get to my own apartment. They'll spot you in a minute. Leave that to me. W will you get me the clothes? All right. In my bedroom. You'll find my dresses in the right-hand closet, the hats in the left. Isabel! Yes, dear! <laughs> No news yet, eh? Okay, thanks. Nothing yet, Susan, but they're pretty sure he's in the building. Ward, do you think Steve has a chance to get to me? Not a prayer, so don't worry about it. 
I am worried. I want him to come here. What? I want to talk to him. Now, don't do it, Susan. He cooked up this party. Let him stew in his own juice. Well, don't argue. Help me. Get the police off his track. Uh, take him to the wrong apartment, anything. Oh, give Steve a chance to get to me, please. Yeah, but I don't see Oh, what... please. Oh, all right, Susan. Thank you, Ward. I'll go down and hang around the lobby. I'll get that. Don't bother. receiving any visitors. I... Oh, but I'm not a visitor. I'm a member of the family. Oh, oh, sure, I can see the resemblance. You're Steve Ireland's mother, aren't you? I beg your pardon. I'm his sister. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Just go right in, Miss Ireland. Oh, thank you so much. You'll find her in the living room. Who's that? Someone for me? Mrs. Ireland. Good evening, dear. Is there something you wanted? Susan. It's me. It's Steve. <gasps> Oh, Susan. What in the world are you doing in those clothes? Susan, I, I'm in a terrible jam. Well, I know, but what are you trying to prove? Look, they're, they're after me with guns. Look, I'm a homicidal maniac. So I hear, but I don't believe it. Well, of course not, but they believe it. And if they catch me, I'll be sitting in a padded cell in a straitjacket from now on. Steve, you might have known something like this would happen. Oh, Susan, are you going to quarrel with me now? I've had the most terrible time just trying to get to you. Doesn't that prove I love you? Maybe. But it doesn't prove why you didn't use that taxi cab that night of our anniversary. Darling, I told you that all Isabella and I did was to walk over to a little bar and have a drink. Honest, darling, I completely forgot that we had a taxi waiting. Oh, I wish I could believe that. Oh, why don't you believe it? Look, honey cake, you hide me somewhere until the cops leave the building, and then tomorrow morning we'll hop on a plane and fly to Canada. George can straighten out this lunacy business while we're having a second honeymoon, a wonderful second honeymoon, huh? All right, I'll do it. Oh, darling, kiss me. No, no, I mean I'll hide you. You'll go to Canada alone. But Susan... Come on, officer. Right. Oh, it's Ward. Get in the bedroom. Okay, the okay. Bedroom. Don't tell him. Susan! Uh, yes, Ward. Uh, here I am. Where is he, Susan? Where is he? Uh, where is uh, who? Steve. We heard his voice. I asked you not to look for him. Now, Susan, I'm not going to let Steve put this over on you, no matter what you say. Come on, officer. Okay, officer, okay. stay right where you are. Unless you have a search warrant. Oh, now, Susan, be reasonable. Susan, where are you? Oh, come in, Aunt Bessie. Susan, I just heard Steve escape. Are you all right? Of course I'm all right. Huh. Why wouldn't I be? Officer, look in the bedroom. Okay. No, don't touch that door. Come out of there. Oh, oh I, I beg your pardon, oh. madam. Oh, dear, I'm frightened me. I'm sorry, madam. You ought to knock, you know, coming into a room. Why, it might have been a very embarrassing incident for both of us. <laughs> You better leave, officer. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry I didn't mean to make any trouble, ma'am. Susan, who is that woman? Uh, uh well, uh... uh Susan, uh, you didn't tell me that you had company. Well, uh, I was trying to keep them from disturbing you. Oh, but it's no disturbance at all. <laughs> I'm always happy to meet friends of my brother Steve. Oh, uh, my Aunt Bessie and Mr. Willoughby. Yes, we've met. Yes, how do you do? How do you do? So you're Susan's Aunt Bessie. <laughs> Well, I'm just ever so, uh, well, just ever so. <laughs> and, uh, you're Stephen's sister. Yes. Yes, I remember, from Saskatchewan. Yes, that's right, from the Saskatchewan. Oh, it's such a pity about Stephen. Oh, yes, it's terrible. Susan, will you please tell us where he is? You're hiding him, aren't you? Will you give me one good reason why this is any business of yours? It's anybody's business who likes to keep you from making a fool of yourself. Suppose I want to make a fool of myself. Susan, Steve double-crossed you once. He'll do it again if you give him the chance. Ward, you're being very rude talking like this in front of Steve's sister. I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to be rude, but it's not my fault if Steve's a stinker. A stinker? Now, see here, Mr. Willoughby. I've heard just about enough from you. Why, if I weren't a lady, I'd slap your face. Ooh. Hey, take it easy. Oh, dear. I'm so sorry. Uh, pardon my hot temper, please. Well, I... Ward, you can't blame Miss Ireland for trying to defend her own brother. Well, it's my duty. After all, Stephen is my own flesh and blood. He certainly is. <laughs> I'll tell you what Steve really is, if you want to know. He's a fake and a cheat and a bad sport. Oh, how dare you! No! Oh, dear, how embarrassing. 
I'm so impulsive. I got a good mind to let you have a sock in the... What? What are you thinking of? Well, whatever it was, I'm still thinking of it. <laughs> My dear Miss Ireland, you do have a nasty temper. Oh, dear, all our family are like that. You know, Stephen once nearly killed three men with his bare hands. How horrible. What were they, pygmies? Oh, you mean that you got my word? <laughs> Why, if I were a man, I'd knock you down for that. No! <laughs> oh, dear. There I go again. Oh, my goodness. Oh, I'm so ashamed. I'm so ashamed. Oh, <laughs> oh, Miss Island, don't cry. Please don't be upset. <laughs> Ward, you ought to be ashamed. She's crying. She must be very easily hurt. She's easily hurt? <laughs> Ward, apologize. I'll leave this apartment immediately. Apologize? Yes. Well, all right. I apologize, Miss Island. I take my hat off, too. I bet you can lick any dame in the world. <laughs> hey, Mike. See any sign of him yet? No. Keep your eyes peeled. Okay. Officer. Officer, I found him. What? Where? He's upstairs in his own apartment. Hey, Mike, come here. We got him. Where is he? Upstairs. He's his sister. Huh? I'm telling you, Steve Ireland is his sister. Whose sister? I got it right after she hit me. She? Who? Steve Ireland. Come on. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. Don't I know you? This way, boys, this way. Sure, sure, I know you. You're Hiawatha. What? Hiawatha. Hey, grab this I guy. He just go. Go. No, 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 no. Susan, I don't understand you, really. If he was hiding here, you should have given him up. Even you must see that, Miss Ireland. Oh, no, no, no. I think Susan is perfectly right to protect Stephen if she loves him. I don't love him. I'm glad to hear that, Susan. I just don't want Stephen hunted and hounded like a common criminal. Well, all he's done is... He's he... tried to prevent you from divorcing him. Any crazy way he could. Just because he loves you too much to let you go. Miss Ireland, I don't think that you realize. If you'd been watching this marriage night after night as I have, you'd know what was wrong. Oh, indeed. Well, perhaps that's the root of all the trouble. <laughs> what do you mean? Will both of you please stop this? I have a mind of my own, and I'm perfectly capable of running my own life. Well, very well, my dear. Well, now, if you'll excuse me, I think I'll retire for the night. What? I'm very tired, dear. Uh, is the bedroom uh, this way? No, no, uh, that's my room. Your room is down here, Miss Island, the guest room. Oh, dear. I was hoping to sleep in there. <laughs> For some reason, I feel drawn to that room. I do so love a southern exposure. Well, if you go in my room, you'll get another kind of exposure. Oh, well, I wouldn't want that. I thought not. But good night. And, Susan, dear, if you get lonely during the night, I do hope you'll feel free to come to me. <laughs> Mighty night, dear. <laughs> Susan, Susan, I am not going to leave you under that woman's influence. I'm spending the night here. But, Aunt Betsy, there won't be room for you. Nonsense. You go to bed, dear. I'll bunk in with your guest. Oh, no. <laughs> no, you, you two would just fight all night now. <laughs> Run along, Aunt Betsy. Imagine the nerve of that woman defending Stephen to us. I'd like to hear her explain what Stephen was doing that night he was out with Mrs. Grayson. I don't think you'll ever convince Miss Ireland there was anything wrong in that. I'll convince her. After all, I saw them with my own two eyes. You what? As I was leaving the building, I saw them walking along the street as bold as you please. You saw them walking along the street? Along the street? Yes. Where? Well, then he... He wasn't in her apartment. What? Oh, um, look, Aunt Bessie, you sleep in my room tonight. Believe me, it'll be much better. And, uh, look, I'm going to take Miss Island back to Saskatchewan in the morning. That is... Honestly, Susan, you're so confused tonight. Oh, Aunt Bessie, uh, go to bed and don't worry. I'm not confused anymore. Well, all right, but I hope you get a good night's sleep. Thank you. Oh, Miss Island. Miss Island? Yes? Oh, come right in, Susan, dear. Hello. Hello, Susan. Did I wake you up? Yes. What's the matter, Ward? Susan, listen. The nut house people pick me up. They think I'm my own Give me Would that you phone. Somebody down and get me out. Hey, hey. Hello, Ward. So who's this? What are you doing there? <laughs> Oh, 
many delightful evenings of entertainment in the past, and for another in this theater tonight. Our gratitude to William Powell and Hedy Lamar. Thank you, Cecil. But it could hardly help being delightful with Hedy present. <laughs> That's very nice of you, Bill. By the way, did you know there are only 19 more shopping days before Christmas? Sounds like a hint, Bill. I'm a little confused mathematically. How do you figure 19 days, Hedy? There are just 19 shopping days before November 1st the deadline for sending Christmas packages to the boys in the armed forces overseas. Uh, you have any suggestions on uh, what to send? Well, something small and something useful. The package should be light and not larger than a shoebox. And whatever is in it, a lot of love will go with it. Mm, I'm sure that will double the thrill for the boys, Eddie. And especially if uh, you send a little love, too. <laughs> I have some more advice to give tonight, Mr. DeMille. It's about Lux Soap. You've heard of it? Well, sounds familiar. <laughs> well, uh, I've used Lux Soap for a long time, and I'm sure any woman will find that it's a very lovely com complexion care. <laughs> On the screen, Hetty, a Lux close-up is a lucky close-up. Uh, what's the news on your next play, Cecil? Well, it's a play about the theater, Bill. A drama by Zoe Aiken. And it's called Morning Glory. And our stars will be... Judy Garland, John Payne, and Adolphe Monjou. <laughs> Morning Glory is the, is the story of a young actress fighting for a chance at fame, fighting with a courage that refuses to fail. Next Monday night, I, I promise you a stirring drama with a fine cast. I'll be in the audience, Cecil. That's a great play. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. You made the rafters ring tonight. Now, here's some news about two new radio programs that are so outstanding that it's both a duty and a pleasure to tell you about them. Beginning next Wednesday night over these same stations, Bob Burns, our beloved Arkansas traveler, will begin a half-hour weekly series of truly American humor. And we welcome Bob back to the fold. Immediately following Bob Burns will be another half-hour starring an old friend, of yours and mine, Lionel Barrymore. Lionel's program is called The Mayor of the Town. We look forward to many weeks of the performances that only he can give. A glance at your local paper next Wednesday will supply the time for both. Our sponsor, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night. When the Lux Radio Theater presents Judy Garland, John Payne, and Adolf Monjou in Morning Glory. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. Every American kitchen can be a munitions factory. If every woman saves four ounces of waste fat a week, it'll make nearly two million pounds of explosives. Strain all used frying fats, meat drippings, and bacon grease into a clean, wide-topped can. Your meat dealer will buy them and send those fats to war. Save all waste kitchen fats to make explosives. Heard in tonight's play were Gail Gordon as Ward, Dorothy Lovett as Isabel, Verna Felton as Mrs. Cooper, Joseph Kearns as Dr. Klugel, and Fred Mackay, Ferdinand Mounier, Arthur Q. Bryan, Wally Mayer, Eddie Marr, James Bush, Bessie Smiley... Horace Willard, Betty Hill, Boyd Davis, Griff Barnett, and Norman Field. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers. And this is your announcer, John M. Kennedy, reminding you to tune in next Monday night to hear Judy Garland, John Payne, and Adolf Monjou in Morning Glory. Are you tired, nervous, worn out? You may need extra vitamins and minerals. Then here's your chance to try VIMS, V-I-M-M-S. Your druggist is now featuring a special trial offer of Vim. Buy the $1.69 package, get the regular 50 cent size free. Get your free Vims right away and get that Vims feeling. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.